HasLab His Tank is here. Let's open it. All right, I know from my uh, earlier HasLab um, item, the Sky Striker, there should be an inner box inside the outer box. So let's, yes, there is. Yes, there is. Okay. So, um, shall I take this out or should I open? I'm just going to open it. Um, I think it, the inner box is going to be too difficult to get out. It has these uh, corner pieces. Corner pieces. Let's open the inner box carefully. I don't want to slice it too deeply because I believe inside the inner box is an even inner box that has the toy itself. So here we go. Opening this up. Did I cut it enough? Yes, I did. Oh, it's got to go. I uh, don't know what I can use these for, but I'll, I'll find some use for them. Now we can open this, and we have... Yeah, there we go. There's that beautiful HasLab Cobra His Tank artwork. The design, which we shall see even better. Let me take it out. Let's see. What's going to be the best way to get this out? This should just... There we go. That is free. There we go. Looks like this end of the plastic sleeve is open. So I can just slide that off, right? Yeah, there we go. Slide that off. And we have... Oh, yeah. Look at that. That black and red... Uh, black and red may be my favorite color combination. Maybe. It's, uh, it's a really good one. Uh, but let's look at this box all the way around. There we go. There's the top. Is there anything on the bottom? There's just, let's see, on the bottom is, yeah, a diagram. Red on black and black on red. That is absolutely gorgeous. Looks like we have, um... Yeah, it looks like we have some tape here to cut. So let's do that. Then we can actually get the thing out. There we go. Just want to cut the tape, not the box itself. Um, all right, so does this swing open? It sure does. All right, that swings open. And we've got, looks like a, oh, we've got a couple cardboard trays. Check this out. Really, really nice branding. Really nice branding. I love it. All right, so we've got this huge tray. Oh, look at that. That's that's lovely. Um, and I'm assuming that has the figures, and this is the his tank itself. So let's uh, pull it out. Now we will set aside this beautiful package uh, box with all the gorgeous artwork on it, setting that over here so that it does not get damaged. And it doesn't look like either of these are uh, taped. So this, if I'm not mistaken, this would be the figures, right? It looks like it just swings open. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Sticker sheets and some other paperwork and some tissue paper. One, two, three four classified six-inch action figures, including the carded Cobra Commander. We're gonna, we're gonna look at these. Uh, let me swing this closed here for a second so that I can sit it aside and take a peek at that. So here is the vehicle itself. Looks like it just swings up from here. Oh my. Um, all right, so there's there are some pieces that are kind of just slid into these uh, openings uh, on this top shell. So we've got a cannon piece, we've got uh, canopies, multiple canopies, we've got uh, some treads. So these, these are not the treads, these are the armor pieces for the treads. So we've got extra pieces, and then I believe if I pull this, oops, I believe, I believe if I pull this up, we shall have, yeah, oh wow, okay, little cardboard pieces, setting aside, the cats are already interested in the boxes, but there, there she 
she is. We've waited for it, and there she is. One beautiful Hiss tank in a plastic wrapper. I know we've got these uh, smaller pieces and these slots uh, around the Hiss tank. I'll try to get that, get a view on that. So, yeah, these are all individually wrapped in plastic. Keep them all safe. And then we have the big one. Here she is, the Hiss tank. I'm gonna set her right there. I'm gonna move this box so that I can remove the tank itself from the plastic. And we can see it for the first time after, it was a fairly significant wait to get it, but not too long. I've waited longer for other uh, Kickstarters and crowdfunding projects, so it's a bit, it was a bit of a wait, but not as bad as it could have been. And, uh, yeah, okay, so there's like a, a plastic shrink wrap around it. And, uh, let's see, yeah, plastic shrink, shrink wrap, cardboard, and more plastic shrink, shrink wrap. There's the edge. All right. There she is, the basic tank. Uh, it's it's hefty. It's it feels very high quality. Um, it's not extremely heavy, but there is a heft to it. It is substantial, and it is it's large because it's made for six-inch action figures. All right, I'm gonna take a closer look, and I'm gonna start putting this together. But uh, there's that cockpit, and um, yeah, it has the the light that should shine a cobra emblem down on the table in front of it so we will get all of that ready now we, do we have instructions or was that in here do we have instructions in here we have stickers in here uh, now these stickers it looks like you can put other decals on it but i really like the 788 that's on here and i would not want to change it the basic deco on here with the cobra emblem and the the 788 and the other things those are not stickers those are painted on which is beautiful and i love the extra effort so got some legal disclaimers i got a cat playing with the box if you hear a sound it's a cat playing with the box look at all this look at all that and and then that it's, it's lovely, isn't it? So I'm gonna use this to assemble it. And yeah, there, here are some extra stickers. You can have a more classic 788 rather than the, the fade on this 788. Uh, or you can have different numbers. You can just put different numbers on it. I want the classic look, so I'm gonna leave it exactly as it is. But for those who want to customize it a bit more, uh, you have options. Oh, let me also make a note. These are real rubber treads that really roll. That is not a fake tread with just some wheels under it. Um, that is awesome. I know some folks were saying they wanted uh, the Hiss tank to be motorized. Well, it isn't, and I would not use a motorized feature even if it was, so... Uh, having the his tank motorized would have been an extra expense for a feature that I would never have used. Uh, so I'm kind of glad it wasn't. But for those customizers who customizers who would like to motorize the his tank, you have working treads for starters. We've got a couple options for the canopy. We have the classic clear plastic canopy, which is nice. But we also have. Uh, the updated canopy with the uh, panels and the gullwing doors. Let's let's uh, see if we can pop that on. Uh, it looks easy enough. I'm glancing at the instructions. It also it has a plastic bag and the plastic shrink wrap as well, so it's double protected. And it, uh, yeah, it uh, looks pretty good. It has. A couple tabs here that will fit on there, it looks like, for the hinge. Ah, okay, we have a canopy. Here we go. 
piss tank with canopy, setting this aside, and there we go. One canopy closes, has a tab at the front where it snaps in front, and the classified style canopy uh, has these gull wing doors that swing open. Uh, it's kind of cool. Get some air conditioning, get some airflow for the driver, but I don't think the driver can actually uh, fit in and out of there, so it's primarily for looks. Um, is it, does it look better than the clear pan canopy? It, it really depends because um, it, it's a bit more red on the front end of the vehicle. Uh, it, at least so far, it's not balanced by any additional red at the back end. The main guns are here. Uh, nice, all the plastic bags have uh, are open. You don't have to tear them open, which means you can place the items back inside. That's lovely. Uh, so this looks like there's a control yoke there. Ah, that's right. They are ratcheted. There are a couple uh, pegs there that fit in these holes, and that should looks like it should fit pretty snugly and pretty easily, maybe. So we have where we are emulating the look of the classic his tank, but we're doing it in a different way, in a more sturdy way. This is uh, much more substantial than the vintage his tank cannons. They can elevate independently um, on a ratchet and those are, are not going to break. You know we had that problem with the, the vintage uh, his tank cannon. So now we've got these other pieces and I'm going to try to follow the instructions on how to assemble them. So we've got these side mounted uh, missile launchers. We've got two of those. Um, once we attach all of these, then it will have a much more geared up look than the original. But, um, looks like here we have these uh, these hatches that open on the side here. Uh, you can remove these missiles to fire them. And let's see, it looks like those go right in there. Ah, they latch in very, it's a very satisfying click. Um, same on the other side, it's a hatch uh, right there, flip it up, and there we go, snap it in. All right. Now I'm, I'm surrounded by plastic, I'm going to move some of this plastic. Now this is where maybe the red on the canopy gets balanced out a little bit with some additional red stripes on the armor pieces. So let me see how these are supposed to go on. These go on. It's hard to line this up when I'm not looking at it, so let's see. Is that, is that in? I think that's in. So there you go. You have some armor plate. I'll put this on. And these are the updated classified style armor rather than the... Oh look, we have a cat. He's drawn to the large black vehicle. He thinks it's a uh, long lost relative. All right, there we go. So there are the army pieces. They peg into holes on the bogies. Uh, we have, let's see. Again, these, these extra armor pieces that, um, if you want it to look more like the vintage his tank, you can pop these on. Uh, which I which I will do. I'll show you guys what it looks like with the classic looking pieces later. But I'm also want to show you the uh, the updated and upgraded uh, classified style um, pieces and such. These little mini machine guns, which should go, I believe. Oh wait, this is the chin gun. Hey, check this out. This is the chin gun. Yeah, there we go. Give us some additional forward firepower. There we go. It is articulated. And it goes right there. Looks like it. And 
there's the cat again. Curious about what's going on. Nothing going on, sir. There we go. Many machine guns post on there. And that's basically it. What are these pieces for? These are ammunition boxes. Yeah, these are ammunition boxes for the mini guns. Let me see how they attach. Looks like they attach. Uh, like this. Looks like the red faces front. Which means this should go like this. And this should go like this, right? Yeah, looks like it. Okay, so there's the fully loaded look. Oh yeah, this is the extra armor piece for the gunner. Let me see where this goes. I believe this just, uh, let's see, yeah, snaps on, kind of slides on there between the machine guns. Now you have some extra armor for the machine gunner. Uh, and that's it. Now this is the fully loaded and geared up look for uh, the Hazlab his tank. Let's show some uh, modifications and then we will look at the action figures. Here is the his tank with the full loadout in classified mode, you might call it, uh, with all of the additional weapon pieces attached. You have these missile launchers, one on each side, and those will those will swing out. So uh, those will extend, and these missiles are removable. Uh, they peg in a lot like a vintage GI Joe missile, which is. Uh, nice. No reason to update the technology when it works. Uh, there are electronics on this. I'm going to try to show you the features before I show you the electronics, but there's a button on the underside here that's very easy to uh, press while moving it around, so you may get a sneak preview at some of the electronics um, as I'm showing you the features. Uh, but let's start in the front. We have the canopy. Uh, the canopy has these gull wing doors which will swing open, one on each side. It's got the black and the red trim around the clear plastic, um, and it will open from the front, swing up on the hinge, and you have a cockpit with lots of detail. Uh, that's gonna look even cooler with the electronics on. It's got a single seat with a seat belt uh, and some controllers. So um, we're gonna show you that with the electronics on. Um, after I show you all these features, and then I'll put it in the vintage classic His Tank mode with the other parts. Uh, it has some ladders, which can swing down for the gunner to have access to the gun turret. So these ladders, one on each side, uh, that's a nice touch. All these little details that were not on the original His Tank, uh, but could have been. They make sense. They're functional. We have this large gun turret, will, which will rotate all the way around. It takes a little bit of muscle to do it, but uh, just keep pushing and you can spin this thing all the way around. Uh, it will elevate. Uh, the two main guns will elevate on a ratchet independently. That's a bit different from the vintage His Tank, but you can still, you can still make it look like that vintage with both both weapons elevated to the same uh, to the same degree. Also, this whole turret will come out, which is nice. I'd rather the thing come out than for it to break. So um, that cup for the machine gunner or for the gunner to stand will entirely come out. Uh, in addition to these, we have you know the armor plate in the front. There are two mini guns here, which will also pivot. Uh, and elevate, and they've got the ammunition cans. Uh, I guess the gunner is supposed to operate all four of these guns. So uh, the gunner has a lot of work to do on here, uh, operating both the main guns and these two side mini guns. Um, in addition to that, we have uh, in the back this rail, you know, for somebody who's riding along on this platform uh, to grasp onto. Always wise to have some kind of a grip for, for uh, anyone riding on the back. Uh, that uh, back platform will flip up and down, and it has a flip out tow hitch. There will be things for it to tow. Uh, it doesn't have anything to tow right now, but there will be things in the future for this uh, his tank to tow. And then finally, we have the back door, uh, which can pull down. And uh, the electronics inside may come on. Let's see. 
Uh, yep, yeah, okay, yeah, the light turns on on the inside when you open the ramp. You've got this kind of silver plastic uh, textured ramp. Uh, you've got a seat, a single seat inside, and this seat will, will slide up and down. Um, and then on this side it has a rack for some weapons. It has a, a weapons rack on there. And uh, I guess that's for the weapons that comes with the figure. Uh, we will put some weapons in there once we look at the figures. And yeah, this, I mentioned the electronics might might come on. <laughs> um, you might get a preview uh, because it's very easy to accidentally hit that button. But uh, yeah, it has some tail lights as you saw. Um, so this is nice. This is something the vintage his tank did not have, uh, at least the first version of the his tank. Uh, and, you know, there's enough room in there. there. There's a cavity in there. You can use it. Why not use it for some weapons and uh, a tactician uh, or just anyone riding along? Uh, so that is the back. Uh, these treads are amazing. Uh, these treads, they, they roll. They're a little rough, as you would expect, but the treads, I mean... They're, they're rubbery and they're really solid. I don't think you will have any trouble with these treads if you move this thing around. Yeah, um, it's substantial and it's nice to have actual treads and not the fake treads that we got on the vintage uh, vehicle uh, with just some wheels underneath. Now this underneath um, the battery compartment is here, and I, I did put some batteries in, and then there's that button which is here uh, that activates the electronics. Uh, before I show off all the electronics, I want to go ahead and sw uh, swap out these parts. I want to take all the extra pieces off. Uh, I want to put the, the pieces that mimic the vintage His Tank on so that you can see a side-by-side -side comparison between this and the vintage His Tank. So, uh, let's pause for a second and I'll swap out some parts. Here it is as a classic his tank. This is without all of these extra pieces. Uh, and it comes with a lot of extra pieces. Um, so this is without the extra weapons and the extra deco decorative stuff. Uh, this, this is a his tank. It is a his tank similar to the vintage his tank from 1983. Um, that is that is the size of a vintage his tank. And yep, I did activate the electronics again. It is really easy. I don't know if it's a complaint or not, but it's very very easy to accidentally activate the uh, the electronics because the button is right here where you would normally put your hand to move this thing. So. Uh, if you don't want to wear out your batteries, you know, just be careful. This is the His Tank from 1983, and this is your HasLab His Tank uh, for the classified scale, scaled for 6-inch action figures, and uh, obviously it's much bigger. Uh, it has that uh, classic vintage uh, uh, clear plastic canopy. Uh, it, it Already on mine it has cat fur on it. It doesn't take long for the cats to get fur all over everything. My apologies. I've tried to keep this thing clean and keep them off of it, but you know how cats are. It's almost just a straight scaled up from the original uh, His Tank, the 118th scale His Tank, um, but you still have a, a few extra features. You still have the ladders on the sides. You still have the hyper detailed cockpit, and with that clear canopy up, that's, that's very reminiscent of of your vintage his tank, um, access the uh, cockpit in exactly the same way, a single seat cockpit, um, and uh, and you have the the cargo door in the back that opens up to the uh, troop carrying and weapons carrying compartment. Let's look at this cockpit really quick. It has the seat belt, and that seat belt can be unhooked. There is. Yeah, there's a, a peg and a hole so you can unhook that seat belt to fit the figure in. You've got the Cobra emblem, you got the red seat. Uh, check this out. This joystick, that joystick, it moves. It moves. And this uh, 
this throttle switch here that also moves it's it's a functional cockpit look it's got colored buttons it's got screens there's your your classic look his tank i mean this thing uh if this is what you wanted you know here you go you, you can't beat it it's a his tank um if you wanted something extra if you just don't want just an upscaled upsized uh his tank if you want it refreshed a bit if you want it uh more decked out you can add any of these pieces um you can add the 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 alternate armor which just has more detail and more color uh you can add the the other canopy uh which just again has just a bit more detail and color uh so uh you you can also uh, change out the stickers. You can change out the numbers. You can, ch you can change out the Cobra emblem style. There is the Mickey Mouse Cobra emblem on there. Uh, that's going to be important for later when we look at the Cobra Commander figure. Uh, but there are some customization options, or you can have it like this, which is probably how I will have it, uh, which is with the classic look, uh, your, your classic Hiss Tank. The back of the instruction sheet shows how many times you need to push the button on the bottom to activate the different electronics. It's a one button system, so however many times you touch it will determine what turns on. I'm going to turn some lights out because I think some of these light up features will look better, so lights out. I believe if I hit this one more time, then the, yes, the Cobra ground effects will come on, so check that out. This, uh, there's your his tank, and it actually shines a cobra emblem. It shines a cobra emblem, this ground effect, on the ground in front of the his tank. It's harder to see with the light on, but with the light off, uh, that is really sharp. This is a really cool feature. I don't know how often I would really use this, but it sure would make it look even more impressive on the shelf. If I'm not mistaken, if I hit it again, it should turn on the headlights. Yeah, there we go. So, hey, let's turn the lights out and see what those headlights look like. Yeah, you know, just imagine that coming down the highway looking at you. That's, that's pretty scary. There are also lights on the back. This is really good. I don't really need electronics. It's not... Uh, vital. I like this thing. I would like it even without the electronics, but it is just kind of cool that the thing has lights in the front and the back. And then I think, I think the next one is already activated. I may have pushed the button uh, too many times, but no, no, I take that back. You got your head, your, your, your brights. It turns the brights on. So now you have these beams on the underside um, to uh, to track down the enemy at night. That's awesome. Hitting the button again will, let's see, turn, it turns that off. Uh, it turns off the, the Cobra uh, emblem on the ground. It turns off the ground effect, but it seems to keep the other lights still on. Yeah, the lights in the back are still on. The lights in the interior are still on, um, but the ground effect is turned off. Hit it again, and what does it do? Um, it turned off the top lights, uh, but it still has the lower lights on. Uh, does not have the ground effect on. Um, it uh, still has the interior lights on, uh, and it still has the tail lights on. Uh, and then let's hit it one more time, and I believe that'll turn the ground effect back on. Let's, let's adjust the camera. I think this one will turn the ground effect back on. Uh, no, I miscounted. Uh, that one I think turns off everything. It looks like except for uh, these red lights in the front. So only those lights are on. Uh, the lights in the back are also off. The interior lights are off. And then if I hit it one more time, yeah, that turns the ground effect back on without the interior lights. The interior lights are off, but the ground effect is on. And then I think if I hit it one more time, everything is off. Yes, that's off. One reminder, there is one other lighting effect. If you open this cargo door, the interior will light up. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the electronics so you can see the light up cockpit. Check this out. Yeah, look at that. Look at that, look at that light up cockpit. That is impressive. You got like radar screens and some gauges and uh, some touch screens and a, like a, uh, a targeting system here. Uh, it's really nice, it's, that's really impressive. A lot of detail went into there. 
Let's look at the action figures that came with the His Tank. It came with four action figures. At 25 bucks a pop, uh, that's $100 worth of action figures that came with this, uh, which actually brings the cost of the His Tank itself down quite a bit. It's uh, surprisingly uh, low priced for what you get. I'm impressed anyway. Uh, so we've got some tissue paper and we've got, we've got one, two, three, four action figures. Uh, let's take these out. Well, let's start at this end actually. This is the Cobra Hiss Tactician. Uh, this is special. Um, back in 1982, for the 1983 G.I. Joe series, uh, Ron Rudat, who worked for Hasbro at the time, designed the Hiss Tank Driver. Um, from his color studies, when he was doing the design work for that figure, um, Hasbro uh, let the fans vote on which of the different color studies they would have as an action figure. Basically the same figure, but in different colors. This one won the vote, and you know what? I'm pretty happy with it. This is the one that I wanted to, to win the vote. This package artwork is by Ron Rudat. Um, I have had the privilege of meeting Ron Rudat several times. He's a really cool guy, um, and it's really nice to see him get the recognition that he deserves for all the work he did on G.I. Joe uh, for Hasbro back in the 80s and since then. And here he is right now, present day, in modern G.I. Joe uh, with some package art and with a figure that is based on his color studies back in the 80s. So uh, this one, this one is special to me. Uh, I, this is one of the reasons I wanted to get the His Tank. Of course I wanted the His Tank, but I also wanted to support someone uh, who deserves the support. So uh, well done, Ron, congratulations. Then we have the Cobra His Driver. Um, this looks like, yeah, that's the, the classic, de classic deco. Um, and we have the, uh, this, yes, this is the Cobra Hiss Gunner. So this is a new figure. This is a, a female trooper. Uh, it's nice to get more female troopers. We don't get a lot of those. Uh, but a female trooper in a Hiss driver uniform I like the his driver uniform. You can't go wrong with that. So this, uh, this is pretty cool. So we've got four figures. Those are three that come in the classic um, numbered, the the numbered uh, classified boxes. Which one is number one hundred? The Ron Rudat figure is number one hundred. Well done, Hasbro guys. You know, I've got to give credit to the Hasbro brand team when they deserve it. That's nice. I like that very much. And then finally we have Cobra Commander. And this, let me move this out of the way. This is a carded retro style Cobra Commander, um, but um, this is a bit different. First of all, we have, look at that. Um, that's pretty classic. And look at that, a single language file card, a single language file card. The Cobra emblem on this Cobra Commander is the Mickey Mouse Cobra Commander emblem. That is something that uh, is well known to G.I. Joe collectors. Um, and it's really nice that they, uh, they had this, this little touch to the Cobra Commander figure. That's what makes this Cobra Commander figure special. Now, unlike these, which I, I can put back in the box um, once I've done checking them out. This is, uh, yeah, it, it is, the blister is glued onto the card. So I'm going to have to actually rip the blister off or cut the blister off of the card in order to look at this figure. But you know what? 
That's what I got it for, so that's exactly what I'll do. Let's take a look at the figures, starting with this one. This is the Cobra Hiss Driver. This is the basic figure. This is the one that must come with the Hiss Tank. It's in the windowless style box, and this is what I wanted the windowless boxes to be. More space for character artwork, like this big portrait of the Hiss Driver here. I think that looks great. Uh, it's all in black and red. This is special for this HasLab project. In fact, it says HasLab right there on the top. On the top, it has HasLab G.I. Joe Classified Series. And in the background, it has a diagram of the Hiss Tank. That's very nice, very subtle. I think that looks really good. Uh, G.I. Joe Classified Series Cobra Hiss Driver on the front. On the side, we have this Cobra Hiss Emblem, and this looks great. I always like liked this kind of side-facing Cobra, which was on uh, the Moray Hydrofoil, I believe, is where this is uh, was originated. At least it's based on that. Um, so you've got Cobra Hiss, you have the famous 788, uh, and you have on the back a diagram of the figure with kind of a faded Cobra emblem in the background. This is all made to look very sharp. It's made to look high quality. It's made to look like you really got something for your money. This is not your typical off the pegs, off the shelf, G.I. Joe classified figure. Uh, we can see it comes with a change of hands there and a pistol and a rifle. And then on this side, it has the number 99. Uh, and it has these symbols which represent his specialty. This is number 99 in the Classified series, and he's the Cobra High Speed Sentry Driver. There doesn't appear to be any tape on this, so I believe we can just open this up and take this out of the box and take a look at, oh yeah, look at this. Take a look at our Hiss Tank Driver, and this would be the box for his accessories. There is the Hiss Driver in this coffin-style box, and the character artwork is repeated on the inside of the box. He's attached with these plastic ties, so we'll need to cut those in order to get him out. All right, I've cut the plastic ties, and now here he is out of the box, and just holding this figure in my hand, it just feels special. The leggings here, the leg armor, all in black. It's kind of glossy, so it, it just feels sort of smooth. And uh, then you've got the texture on the top half of the figure, and then you've got the, the, the armor plate with the silver cobra emblem. That is just gorgeous. I'm not going to go over all the articulation on these figures like I normally would. They have standard classified articulation, and I have four figures to go through here. But just look at the details. Look at the helmet with the snake on the top and the visor, the, the black over the face. He has some electronics on his forearm, and that is really nice. Lots of extra detail. And all of the classic details, all the details from the vintage figure are still here, it looks like. It looks like he has a red hinge on the this wrist. He's got a black armband and black over the glove, but then the hinge is red, I guess, to match the inside of the glove. And so it has this problem. It looks, you can see the hinge on the wrist, and it's not the worst ever, but you can see it. You can notice it. And he has the black leg armor and a holster. We'll get the pistol out of the accessories box here in a minute. I never quite understood why the Hiss driver had armor on his legs, since it's the upper half of the body that's exposed, but it still looks really nice on the figure. Here is the vintage Hiss driver standing next to the classified Hiss driver, and yeah, it looks right. It looks like the vintage Hiss driver upscaled and updated. Now, the vintage Hiss driver did not include accessories, but the classified Hiss driver does. So let's take a look at the accessories in this box. I kind of like these accessory boxes from the windowless packaging because it reminds me of the old foot lockers from the 12 inch Joes. Uh, so it looks like you're supposed to open it from the end and uh, the accessories are right here in this tissue paper. And I believe you have to cut or tear the tissue paper to get to them. Yeah, it's, it's not, not open, so we'll just tear into that and dump the accessories out. Come on, guys. All right, there's what we've got. 
We have this submachine gun with a bayonet, a silver bayonet, very long, extending way out beyond the barrel, and it does have a removable magazine. That's a unique accessory that can be put in the cargo bay of the his tank. You can put it on one of those weapons racks if you don't want the driver to carry this around. There's this teeny tiny pistol, and this pistol should fit nicely in the holster. Uh, so he can carry this around. He can carry this accessory while he's in the driver's seat. There you go. One pistol in holster. And then you have two extra hands. They are fists, and it looks like they have rings around the wrist. So let's swap these hands out and see how they look. Here is the Hiss driver with the alternate hands on the closed fists, and it looks like you need to take this wristband off of the right wrist in order to put these on. These rings around the wrist totally cover up the hinge, so you don't have that problem at all. They look kind of like sparring gloves. I think I prefer him with the standard hands-on, even with the unsightly hinge, so I'm going to pop these off, put the original hands back on, and yeah, I just think that's much more functional, and he can hold his rifle. I say that, but it is exceptionally difficult to get it in his hand. You can kind of, wow, angle it maybe, and uh... all right, his driver, I just want to pose you with the rifle just for a second. Come on. Come on, you get, get it in your hand, get it in your hand! The plastic on these hands does flex, and it's a good thing because you really have to stretch it in order to get the weapons in the hands. Okay, you know what? Forget it. He's a vehicle driver, he doesn't need it. Let's put the driver in the cockpit, let's put him in the seat, and just see how he looks. So this seat belt goes between his legs and around his waist, and then this one should go up over his shoulders and then attach here in the center. Let's see if I can do that without getting my hand in the way. Uh, should attach there in the center. Can I do that without getting my hand in the way? There we go. Success. Uh, seat belt is attached. So he's not going anywhere. And as you can see, uh, he sits well in the driver's seat. He's deep down in there. He sits much better in this driver's seat than the vintage figure fit in the vintage vehicle. Uh, so you can close the canopy uh, and uh, yeah, he looks great. He, with the clear canopy, you can clearly see the figure in there. Even though there are some control instruments for him, I am not going to try to put the figure's hands on those. Those look a little thin, and I don't want to break them. But you have a hiss driver in the hiss tank, and that looks fantastic. Now, let's see what the instruments look like with the driver in. Let's, uh, let's light this sucker up, and yeah, there we go. Yeah, instruments on and we are ready for action. Now let's look at the Ron Rudat figure, the Cobra Hiss Tactician with the Ron Rudat artwork and the signature and the color scheme that was voted by fans. It's the same basic box design as the previous figure, has Cobra Hiss Tactician here, and I missed this before, Semper Fidelis Serpens, always faithful to the snake, I think. Same design on the side, which it just looks good. You don't have to change it. It's about perfect. I love it. A diagram of the figure and the accessories on the back looks the same as the Hiss driver. And this is basically a Hiss driver, but with different colors. And um, slightly different specialties. You still have the tank and the ammunition, but you also have this star cluster. He's probably supposed to be an officer. Uh, the others are the same. This is number 100 in the G.I. Joe Classified series, and I'm very happy they used number 100 to do a tribute to Ron Rudat, one of the most important people in the development of G.I. Joe in the 80s. Once again, no tape, so let's open this guy and see what we've got. Here is the coffin tray with the figure. I'll try to pull that out without damaging the box. But uh, here we go. Oh, look at that. <laughs> look at that. Uh, th that is just beautiful. I'm, I'm, I'm almost speechless. I just love that. Look at that. Red and gray and black. That is gorgeous. We have an accessories box like the other figure, and we will look at the accessories, but I want to take this thing out. I really want to look at this figure. Here is the Hiss Tactician out of the box, and I love this figure. This looks like a deluxe figure. I know it's just a color swap, but look at it. The colors look 
great. The gray and the black, the subtle contrast. Look at the, the shine on the shoulder pads, on the armor around the shoulders, the kind of silver color. That black chest plate with the red cobra emblem that pops. And you have, yeah, the base gray with black on top of that. It's, it's a subtle contrast that I just think looks fantastic. You got some extra paint applications on the, on the boot armor there, on the shins. Uh, it's, I, I love it. I love it. I love this figure. I'm really glad this one won the fan vote. That is a gorgeous figure. The accessories should be the same as the his driver, except for perhaps with a color difference. So let's go ahead and pop the, them out, take a look at them, and uh, open the tissue paper wrapping and see what we've got. Um, but I think it's just a variation on the his driver's accessories. And yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Look, you've got a color variation on that submachine gun removable magazine, but you've got red in addition to the black. Looks really nice. You've got those same fists, but with red instead of black. Alrighty. And then you've got the pistol. We'll, we'll go ahead and put the pistol in the holster. That's the one that he can carry. Other than that, though, I'm not going to bother demonstrating the other accessories. We've already seen how they work on the Hiss driver, and they are the same here. This one is going on that weapons rack in the Hiss tank. The tactician, I think, will be seated in the back. He will bark orders over the radio from the relative safety of the interior of the tank. Let's look at the third figure and the last of the Hiss crew. This is the Cobra Hiss Gunner. On this box, we have the character artwork on the front. This is a female cobra trooper and i'm really happy to get more female cobra troopers excellent really nice uh the same basic layout for the box uh same on this side back has the diagram of the figure and the accessories a lot more accessories for this figure uh, looks like the same basic accessories as the others but a few in addition and then we have the specialties over here, and it's a little bit different from the previous ones. These um, these two are different from the Hiss driver. Looks like that's uh, crosshairs, and that is an R2-D2, I guess. This is figure number 101 in the G.I. Joe Classified series, so let's open this up. I am really excited to see this one. This video may not be quite as polished as some of my other videos, but I've been waiting for a really long time to get this Hiss tank, and I'm extremely excited that it's here. So uh, I'm sorry if I'm rushing through this. I'm trying to slow down so you can see everything. But uh, yeah, look at that. That that is something. The design of this Hiss gunner is the same as the Hiss driver, but using the female body, it has basically the same details, same helmet, same technology here on the arm, uh, same overall design, the same details. Everything is the same, but on a female body instead of the male body. The 1983 Hiss tank did not include a gunner. Some later Hiss tanks did, but on that 83 Hiss tank, you had to have another action figure if you wanted someone manning the gun. So it's nice to get a gunner with this HasLab Hiss tank. This is a very welcome addition. There is one point of articulation I wanted to check on this figure, and that is the elbow. This figure does have double jointed elbows and that's nice not all of the female action figures do so I'm glad they have the double jointed elbows on this one this figure includes a lot of accessories so let's look at them let's open the accessories box the foot locker and slide the tissue paper wrapper out and we will peel it open and dump it out and see what we got um, this one has, it, it still has the same accessories as the other two, but it has some in addition to that. So there is our accessories pile. That is a lot of accessories. Check this out. This looks like a, a tactical shotgun with like a drum magazine. That's so cool. Does that come off? It does. It is removable. Oh, I dig that. That is sweet. That is really cool. I love it. Next we have, oh, this this shovel thing. This, um, is that all that's in here? I just want to make sure. Um, yeah, that's it. Okay. Uh, this very 
This very interesting looking tool, this shovel or entrenching tool or whatever it's supposed to be, is certainly quite ornate and uh, I mean it looks good. I don't know that I would have the action figure using it basically ever, but it does look good. We have the same submachine gun as the other figures with the bayonet, the very long bayonet, silver paint, and removable magazine. I like that very much. Uh, it's a unique design and I do like it, but it's going to be really hard to fit in any of these figures' hands because of the way the grip is designed. That's just going to be hard to get the hand wrapped around that. We have a Mjolnir, I guess. It looks like a, a hammer and a pickaxe on this end. A spiked hammer. That's pretty gnarly looking. Uh, another piece of equipment that I probably wouldn't use on the figure, but it's nice to have, and it just adds something that the gunner might use to work on the his tank, you know, maybe you have to hammer down some of that armor plate or whatever. We have the fist hands. I'm sure for some collectors, these extra hands are vitally important. I don't care as much about them, so, you know, these are just extra pieces to me. In fact, I'm not going to bother putting them on the figure because I just don't care about those. What I do care about is the pistol because this is something that can be holstered so the figure can just carry this. We don't have to leave this in the box or put it on the weapons rack. It can just go in the holster and now we have an armed gunner. Where will the gunner go? Let me think. How about in the turret? There we go. And she is the perfect height to man these giant guns. There is a steering yoke that I pointed out that earlier and I believe you can place the figure's hands on there. That steering yoke is a softer plastic so I don't think there's any danger with squeezing the figure's hand. Yeah, squeezing the figure's hands on that steering yoke. Now we have the gunner in the turret and her hands are on these control yokes. So she's ready. She's ready to go. She's ready to take on G.I. Joe. I, I love this. I think it's fantastic. Now the fourth and final figure, the retro carded Cobra Commander. And this is one that requires us to cut it off of the card so let's go ahead and do it there is the retro cobra commander exclusive to the haslab his tank there is some new card art looks like there's some texture on that art either some paper texture or print texture as seen on the card art and on the figure this is the mickey mouse cobra commander as denoted by this simplified cobra emblem on the chest it is a famous early variant of the cobra commander action figure from 1982 and in fact, you could say it's the first variant. This is a classic look, Cobra Commander, very much in that 1982 style. That is the selling point of this figure. It is Coco as you know him. Accessories include a removable dagger on the left leg and on the back, a recharging pack for his Venom laser pistol. The laser pistol is removable from the backpack and the recharging pack is also removable. I do like that the charging pack is removable so you can have him look as he did in the cartoon series without the pack or you can have him look as he did on the action figure with the recharging pack. You can squeeze the Venom laser pistol into the hand. One thing about these classified weapons, they are difficult to get in the figure's hands, but once you get them in, they're not going to fall out. Cobra Commander has some extra hands. He has a right and a left fist, so he can have both hands in fists, punching, I guess. Then he has a right hand with a finger pointing. And then he has a left hand that is a claw hand, like he's gripping something. And that can work with the final accessory, this cobra wrapped around a globe. With this gripping hand, he can hold the globe with the cobra wrapped around it. It's a bit cartoonish, but so is Cobra Commander. For comparison purposes, we can stand him next to the first G.I. Joe classified series Cobra Commander. And you can see this Cobra Commander is radically redesigned with a more detailed uniform and a more angular helmet. I like the redesign. I like the first classified Cobra Commander. If they only gave us one Cobra Commander, I would choose this one. But it's nice to have a Cobra Commander that's inspired by that 1982 figure. You may recall that the first classified Cobra Commander had extra hands in the same poses, like this right-handed pointing pose. So you might think they just reissued those old hands, but they did not. 
These are the same poses, but the hands are different. They manufactured new hands for this Retro Cobra Commander. Another classified Cobra Commander we can stand next to the Retro Cobra Commander is the Snake Supreme Cobra Commander. It uses the same mold as the first classified Cobra Commander, but with a much more elaborate printed deco. He has a soft good cape. Like the Retro Cobra Commander, the Snake Supreme Cobra Commander can hold a globe in his hand. Hand, but that's where the similarities end. This Retro Cobra Commander is intentionally quite simple, while the Snake Supreme Cobra Commander has extreme intricate detail. You may recall that the Snake Supreme Cobra Commander included a gold Venom laser pistol. Well, is it the same pistol on the Retro figure? No, it is not. They totally redesigned it. They did not reissue the same accessory. The back of the card is simple, but still pretty sweet. It has a huge Cobra emblem and designed by HasLab established 2018. The card text appears to be the same as the version 1 card, but this card is still kind of special. Usually Hasbro has to print multilingual cards for G.I. Joe file cards, but this one has an English-only file card, which means it can include the entire text without being cluttered with five other languages. I think this looks great. And check it out! It's unpunched. Where will we put Cobra Commander on the his tank? I think he should be riding on the back platform. And if he hangs on like this, we can still open the back door. There is your HasLab his tank. What do I think of it? I love it. It would be easy to be disappointed by something of this magnitude and of this cost, and especially after having waited so long to get it. But this thing really does live up to the hype. Are there things that could have been done better? I guess. There are no foot pegs. Foot pegs are a mixed bag. They can be functional, they can help keep a figure on, but they can also break up a nice design. So I guess they chose design over function. And I don't hate it. I'm glad they made a choice and it's okay. But it also would have been nice to have some of that function as well. I like the electronics. They're very well done. It's a good effect like the Cobras on these tail lights. But I don't know that I will use the electronics very often. I can live without the lighting effects. And without the electronics, it could have been a lower price point. But some collectors might not have bought it without the electronics, so I guess they had to include that. I am glad they didn't go with the suggestion of making it motorized. Then we would have had a $500 his tank with a feature that I never would have used. I showed you the updated features like the missile launchers and the other canopy earlier in this video because I wanted to get that out of the way. What I really wanted was a classic his tank for the classified scale, and that's what this is right here. That's how I'm the most happy with it, and I think it's beautiful. The his tank itself is a beautiful design, and you know, you can't go wrong by upscaling that for the classified figures at six inches, but to fit six inch figures in this thing, of course it has to be huge. You may recall with the HasLab Sky Striker, I was a bit disappointed because when I got it, it was missing some parts, but I am not disappointed in this at all. This is, is beautiful. This is everything that I hoped it would be. If it has any shortcomings, it certainly isn't diminishing my enjoyment of it. Yes, the price tag is hefty, but you have to keep in mind it includes four action figures, and these classified figures are running about 25 bucks a piece, so that's $100 worth of action figures. So really, we're getting $100 worth of action figures and a $200 his tank, which is in scale for classified six-inch figures and is enormous with electronics, with extra features, with extra accessories. Really, I can't find a lot to complain about here. That's the HasLab His Tank. I hope you enjoyed this video. I went into as much detail as I could. I admit this video wasn't planned as well and wasn't as polished as a lot of my other reviews, but I really wanted to get this in front of the camera and show you this because I was kind of excited about it. I've been waiting for it a long time, and once I got it out of the box, it actually lived up to my expectations. Um, I think this is fantastic. The His Tank is one of my favorite early vehicles and one of my favorite all-time Cobra vehicles, and to see it at this scale is its special. And the Ron Rudat tribute figure, 
this this is important to me. This means something to me. I've had the privilege of meeting Ron Rudat more than once now, and to actually see his signature on a modern, current G.I. Joe action figure, um, that that means m more to me than the His Tank. The His Tank's pretty special, but this means even more to me than that. When I first got back into G.I. Joe in 2014, I was only interested in vintage. I, that's all I wanted to buy. That's all I wanted to display. That's all I wanted to talk about. And for the most part, it's still the same. I'm still a vintage collector primarily. Uh, but at the time, what was being produced for G.I. Joe uh, modern toys was not stuff that I was really interested in anyway. And then there was the dry period where there wasn't really anything being produced. Uh, if you were interested in the figure subscription service or the uh, JoeCon exclusives, you could grab those, but I wasn't interested in those. Um, and G.I. Joe just seemed to be not on the decline, it had already declined. It just wasn't a thing anymore. Nobody paid attention to it, nobody cared about it, but now... Well, I mean, here we are. This is something substantial. This is something I never would have guessed we would get. And in this quality, this is just extraordinary quality. The, the G.I. Joe team uh, at Hasbro, they've made mistakes. They've made plenty of mistakes, but this is not one of them. All I can say is thank you. And thank you for watching this video. I will be back to vintage G.I. Joe toy reviews very soon. I'm working on one coming up very soon. I also have some more classified toys to review. I usually do classified reviews on Friday. This is a special case, but I should have one coming up on Friday. Hopefully you will enjoy that. This channel will primarily review vintage G.I. Joe toys, so if that's something that interests you, please subscribe to the channel, turn on the notifications, give this video a thumbs up, and check out the website hcc788.com. I can tell you right now, there are big things coming in 2024. But first, we gotta wrap up 2023. And that's what we will do next. I will see you soon. Until then, remember, only G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe.